my subject of speaking is uh, panel products from plantation timber and amending BIS standard. There are a number of uh, standards uh, on uh, plywood uh, for uh, since uh, the plywood manufacturing standard uh, ply, uh, is, is in India. Then the standards works good for the manufacturer giving the uh, best of their product to the consumer. Then why a, st a standard is required? The standard is to, for a product is to guide the manufacturer to produce the product with definite and uniform quality to meet the requirements of the end users. And the product which passes the standard assures the users of its use for purposes with full satisfaction. That is the requirement of the uh, standard. So uh, standard for a product is a must. Otherwise, the manufacturer may not produce a, uniform, a product with uniform quality, which would meet the need of the end, uh, uh, end users. An end user, when purchase a product, does not know what is the, uh, whether his uh, uh, use, whether the use of that material will fully satisfy uh, his need. Why we need to amend the specification? Standard is a good, uh, good one, and it goes years after years with the same standard, but necessity arises to amend the standard because there are uh, always a r and to improve the product. When there is an improvement in the product, it is necessary that parallelly the standard is also modified and gives the exact picture or exact material which are being produced with the improved technology. Then the user's end requirement, end user's re, uh, end uh, requirement also get diversified. The standard should cover up that also. And there are multiple uses from one uh, that for plywood shape. It started with the cheapest in the country. Now you know the panel products has so many uses and replaces solid wood for its uh, versatile uh, uh, quality, uh, uh, uniform sizes, thickness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the as the product uh, uh, gets multiple uses to suit the end users um, need the standard is also modif get modified or a new standard is being made for the particular product and end uses from uh, for the uh, bis standard for uh, wood based panel product i will speak especially in the session on plywood only Timber is an uh, anisotropic material, a single property of wood density on which most of the strength properties of wood depends, that is from 0.2 to 0.9. So are the other properties of timber, even from the same species or with, uh, with uh, different ages and place of origin. So to make a uniform product and to fix a standard, is always a challenge for uh, standard makers and also the make uh, manufacturer of the plywood. Why a specification needs uh, revision? When it is found that a panel product repeatedly fails to conform to the present standard and still products are marketed with BIS spam, consumers will not know what product they are buying. And this is a situation which has arrived today. If there is necessity to study the product made with available timber with the standard technology and standard adhesive and fix the taste value of the BIS standard. This is what the necessity of the uh, today. It will not be somebody fears that if we change the standard and there is some 
reduction in value or change is value, this will lead to dilution of the standard. I think this fear should not be there. Rather, if the standard is somewhere fixed and the product is not up to the mark, and still it is BIS stamped, the consumer will be the loser because they will not know that what product, although BIS mark, they are getting the actual product, what is uh, said in the standard. So there is, need, there is need to change the standard. There, need, uh, there comes the question of revision of the standard. With the BIS standard related to plywood, we have uh, we had uh, 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 it has it has been long time the industry especially uh, the manufacturer they were talking about that whatever plywood they are making today there is a change happen the standard at one time was made based on the best timber available from the forest most suitable for making plywood. Those timber, 50 to 70 years old timber grown in the natural forest, best suited for plywood, where had been made. And the standard was made based on the strength, physical or mechanical properties of those plywood. Now the situation has completely changed. Forest timber is no more available. And what is used in India, 95, 90 to 95% of the timber comes from plantation. Five to seven years old in actual practice. This plantation timber immature and no compare with the forest grown timber of 50 to 70 percent, uh, 70 years old. So the strength profile, what is being made today and what is written in the standard based on the plywood of older days is of no match. So there has been a consensus that there should be some revision in the standard on Client. With that idea, the uh, so stand, uh, some studies were taken up with three standards on plywood, IS-303, 710, and 990. And studies were taken up with R&D development, consumers need, and we have also studied the test results of uh, for about 10 years on the sample which has which has been uh, taken up or which has come for testing to EPT laboratory standard plywood with standard technique and best of the resin which can be made was used to make the standard plywood using the plant and timber, which are being usually used in present days for making plywood. All these data were combined together and a modification and, a, and uh, some revision was suggested to BIS. So test parameters, which uh, needed to be changed, preservative treatment. BIS says, that for higher grade plywood, 710 or 4990, a retention of 12 kg of, of preservative should be uh, per cubic meter must be there. But throughout my life, I have seen throughout my life in plywood section and also the plywood manufacturer will agree to get a retention of 12 kg per CBM the only method which has been successful is the pressure impregnation process. But by doing, if actually being done by that process, 
the plywood surface becomes almost unrecognizable that it is made of wood. And there, if there is a slight weakness in the bond, plywood get disintegrated. So, for all practical reason, hardly any plywood manufacturer goes for that. Then slowly R&D was done because market complaint was there if the plywood is not being treated properly. Based on that, R&D was done and it was found that if the veneer, glue line is given treat, uh, a treatment with, insect, uh, with, uh, with, with the preservative chemical, that is the chemical if it is used with the glue and the veneer, is coated with that glue and ultimately the whole plywood after manufacture the surface is given a deep in preservative solution as prescribed by PIS the market complaint comes down and it has been practically found myself has done a limited study in different cities of the town with this technique made in one of the plywood industry in India, and it has been found that deterioration in exposure, that is outdoor exposure of the plywood treated in that way is rare. And most of the plywood manufacturer who are making plywood and giving treatment in that way are satisfied in, the, in respect that the market complaint has come down with respect uh, to biodegradation uh, of the plywood, if properly treatment is given, then the strength properties. As I have already mentioned, that strength of the plywood of five to seven years old is no match with the timber. Uh, 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 with the timber that is fifty to seventy years old and which has been uh, specially, uh, uh, especially selected to make plywood and most suited for making plywood. So the plywood made on today, which does not reach the fellow in starting burning properties or other strength uh, properties, tensile strength, GSS uh, uh, of in, uh, who, uh, is no match with the values given in the standard. So it needs a re-evaluation of, uh, of the values that what best can be obtained by making plywood with the clean section of the available timber which are being used in making plywood with the adhesive made in proper way and used, and the best, uh, the most standard technique used in making plywood. In fact, this has been done, and also the market sample has been studied, and the values has been drawn out of that, has been submitted to BIS that what should be the actual value of the plywood. As I have told, the tensile strength, blue shear strength, these values need to be reviewed based on the practical study which has been done. This is one area which all manufacturer will agree. BIS standard requires that the each adjacent layer, including the face veneer, should not be less than half the thickness of the next layer. In that respect, the face veneer should not be half the thickness of the blue coat. Today, all of us know that because of the high value and non-availability of the face quality timber in the country, in India, this uh, face veneer thickness, next, uh, face veneer thickness has come down to 0.3. Whether, in, whether it is a commercial plywood or it is a higher grade plywood. 
the result of this using 0.3 uh, phase thickness that the MOE N1, which is the most important for uh, for 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 a, for a, for a strength value for a plyo is that it is not achievable as per the BIS specification. BIS specification demands the MOE, MOR values should be more along the face thickness than across. This is not being achievable. Studies have been done on that and suggestion given in the revised uh, to BIS for revision. Next parameter is flatness. Most of the uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, spaces now available in the uh, for plywood making has a common uh, problem that they cannot be uh, they cannot be dried flat and plywood make made out of it gets the usual co uh, complaint from the market that plywood is not flat. Okay. Techniques are available now the, to make flat plywood even with using the uh, uh, using the uh, uh, veneers or uh, or uh, of plantation origins which are available. But since the market complaint is there, so to assure the consumer. The BIS need to include a test on flatness of the panel product, the plywood. Okay, this needed to be included. How this test be done has been included uh, in the in the in the revision draft submitted to BIS. Thickness swelling. Some of the, now in most cases, almost. Uh, 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 Veneer of plantation origins are being used. Even in some plywood uh, are made with timber available locally or whatever is available and fillable. Some timbers, I, I, I have my practical experience with, uh, uh, with uh, Shemul, that these, these are spongy and very porous timber, very spongy and soft timber, that is low density timber. If in plywood making there is problem with bonding, that is adhesive has not worked properly in adhering the surfaces of the veneer, then this spongy plywood, a spongy veneer used in making the plywood absorb moisture if placed in high humidity uh, condition and swells, and the plywood get disintegrated in the long run. So a test should be included in the uh, in the in the uh, bis specification on thickness swelling of the plywood because of the uh, timber used cannot assure that moisture absorption should not be there in the final panel product next one i think formal day dimension has become the uh, talk of the whole world and the uh, all developed countries have taken care of it. Plywood is made with formaldehyde-based adhesive, and some adhesive, especially the amide origin, emits formaldehyde throughout their life in the panel products. Formaldehyde is very hazardous for human being, and continuous inhalation of formaldehyde may lead to uh, serious pulmonary disease in human. While wood-based panel products with such resin are inside the house, especially uh, which are uh, the, in present day, a lot of sealed houses are there because of AC and other uh, requirement. The accumulation of formaldehyde, even in a very slow pace, gets in the, uh, exceeds the hazard level for human health. So throughout the world, there has been a cap or limit of formaldehyde uh, emission 
from the final product, which is not hazardous for human being. BIS is still to include this test in all kinds of crime. So the suggestion has been given to BIS to compulsorily include for all its uh, all its specification on panel products which are bonded with formaldehyde based adhesive. So these are the uh, areas or the uh, uh, where amendment has been suggested for only three specification, but I feel other standards also need uh, more or, or minor or major uh, changes. I just mentioned one specification, next one, that is uh, same, for example, door, as per uh, flash door uh, uh, specification IS2202, flash door may be a solid core, uh, having filler like that, wooden strip, particle board, MDF, mixed uh, type of, uh, mixed type of uh, uh, core, or hollow core flash door, hollow core or cellular core. This above guidelines is very good for manufacturer for making uniformly uh, standard product. But standard is not for the manufacturer only. It should cover the use or guidelines uh, or meet the end use requirement of the users also. Say, if we look from the user side, we all know what type of door we need when we make a house. We want a partition door, we want a kitchen door, bathroom door, front door of the house, backside door, escape door, fire door, terrace door, storeroom door, rooftop door, and so on. Each piece of ply, uh, uh, door differs more or less from one to another. So looking into the customer need, the standard should specify what for, for end use, what for end use uh, the door is particularly uh, specified. So are the other specification. There is no room for uh, taking all the type. I have taken three, thank you all.